just play 100 hours. All you have to do for a game is you just have to play it for 100 hours. And if you play the game for 100 hours, then you'll like it. Okay, that's all, that's all you have to do. If I had more time, I would have written a shorter letter. A famous phrase often attributed to Blaise Pascal, Woodrow Wilson, or Oscar Wilde. Whoever yeah. wrote it, the meaning remains the same. It takes skill to condense information into the smallest possible packet. Rambling yes. is easy. Focusing is hard. This can relate to video games. And it also relates to videos. I'll say that for sure. Whenever I make a video, there are sometimes, like yesterday, whenever I recorded my video, I, I will go through and I am like extremely analytical with myself. Like I will watch my own videos and I'll be like, there's like a four second like moment in the video that's bad. I re-record the whole thing. I say, this is a garbage video. I don't want to have this out there. And I'll even go back to my old videos and I'll say, this video sucks and I should not have done it this way. And I'll watch my own streams and say, I said too many uhs, I said too many ums, I'm being boring here, this part of the stream sucks, and I am ex I am the biggest asshole to myself, okay? Any of you guys in chat that are complaining about something I do on stream are nothing next to the way that I treat myself. RPG design, especially thanks to the popularity of a phrase I absolutely loathe, it gets good, 100 hours in. Yeah. I've been making MMORPG related YouTube content for years. Yeah. Variations of it gets good 100 hours in are commented on every single video. It doesn't matter if I personally play for 5, 10 this or 50 good. hours. I will always get I someone like telling me it gets good 100 hours in. So let's discuss Seems this. like a good version of Ladies Godfall. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. According to YouTube captions, I'm Josh Dryface. Certain video games, especially MMORPGs, are designed to be played for extremely long periods yeah. of time, which means the veteran- I would disagree with the Final Fantasy example. I think Final Fantasy is fine to play at the beginning, but I do think that if a game has a very slow start, that is a problem with the game. I do not think this is a... So, like, there's some people that think that, oh, well, if you can't, you know, if your attention span isn't long enough to play the game through its unnecessarily long, uh, you know, boring period, then that's your fault as a player. I think that is a, it is a shortcoming of a game whenever the game itself is bad at the beginning. ...in those games often have hundreds, if not thousands of hours of gameplay time. So when yeah. a new player joins and says, I've got a problem with this system, I don't think this part of the game is as good as it can be, I'm not having a really good time in the early game, the veterans often respond, just play longer, it gets better. And yeah. a lot of people have told me, you need to play a game for about a hundred hours <laughs> before you can properly critique it, especially an MMORPG. And I, I, I think that's true to an extent, but it's also the, the fact that you don't want to play it for 100 hours before you critique it and you say that it's bad is a critique in itself. The fact that it does not hook you immediately is bad. But like, for example, like if somebody didn't get level 60 or level 50 in New World uh, beta, level 40 even, right? I'm not going to take a, a lot of what they're saying as seriously as I am going to take what I think seriously, right? Because they just didn't play the game as much as I did. However, their experience is still relevant because there's a reason why they didn't play it all the way to level 40. That And that matters. Take umbrage against this exact statement. Yeah. Because I think saying you need to play for 100 hours is used as an excuse for poor early game design. True. Or vastly underestimates the amount of free time people actually have to play games. True. So let's look at both of those things. We're losers. Before we begin, consider dropping a like on the video, subbing to the channel for more MMO stuff, or ringing the bell so you get all the future notifications. As usual, a massive thank you to all the supporters on Patreon it's and crazy. Twitch who keep the now. channel Holy going. Shit. More on this at the end. For now, let's begin. There are three main areas I want to cover to explain why the That's it gets good. good 100 hours in argument is a terrible position for a game to be in and actively makes your game worse. Yeah. First, the amount of time the average gamer has available to game. Second, the importance of the new player experience, specifically the first two hours. And finally, the implication yeah. this has for your narrative focus or lack of for your game's writing. Let's start. I, I quit Skyrim on the wagon ride. I said, bitch, this shit's taking too long. I'm done. Listen, I, I understand, but like that's an opinion that certain people have, that certain individuals have. 
ADD Andy. Yeah, whatever you want to call it. I'm not ADD Andy. I, I might actually, I don't know if I'm ADD. Like people say like I have Asperger's, they say I'm autistic, they say I have ADD, ADHD, dyslexia, all this shit that I, I've, people have told me that I've had all throughout my years. I don't care. I, I don't, I'm not interested in labeling myself and saying, oh, this is what my problem is or this isn't what my problem is. Yeah, I don't give a fuck, man. With the average gamer. Now, when I say average gamer, who do you picture? I what try lifestyle not to. do they have? And most importantly, how long do you think an average gamer plays games for? Four Multiple hours. Multiple studies every day. have been conducted over the pandemic, a perfect time to study gamers when we're all staying inside gaming. And the state of online gaming is interesting. Reported on by Tech Republic, it was found out the average gamer plays games for eight hours and twenty seven minutes a week. That's just over no, nah, it's gotta count. That that's gotta be Candy Crush phone moms. That that's got nah, bro. Because like everybody that I know, whenever we game, man, we go eight hours a day minimum. Eight hours a day, fucking minimum. What do you mean? Over one hour and ten minutes a day. The average gamer is also a mid thirties professional male and has on average three children. Now, when I say I want to say also mid thirties professional male. Big fucking surprise that all these games have microtransactions because these dudes are making money. If you're in your mid 30s, you're probably like two or three positions into your career. Like you're making fucking money. And yeah, you got three kids. I mean, yeah, actually, yeah. <laughs> never mind. Maybe it doesn't matter if you're making money. You're, you're spending money too. I'd picture the average gamer. Most people don't picture a 30 something year old dad of three with an hour a day yeah. to game. Most people picture a younger person with four or more hours of gaming time every single night. And this is one of the issues with the hundred hour argument. Yeah. MMOs need casual players to survive. They bolster the player base and bring in massive amounts of revenue, but the average yep. casual player only has one hour to play. If you tell them a game needs a 100 hour investment to get good, That's chances days. are they will lose. Leave. Imagine yeah. if someone said to you, you must play this video game every moment of your free time for the next third of a year. And if you do that, you might end up having fun. 100 hours is much more than most people will have free in one, two, sometimes even three months. Yeah, so nobody's going to sit around and play through the dog shit version of the game for fucking months just to get to the fun part, man. There's no way that's going to happen. Like, why would anybody want to do that? Like, for me, like, what's crazy is, like, whenever I started playing WoW, dude, I was hooked immediately. Like, I was, by the time that I made it to Westfall, I thought I was about halfway to endgame. I was like, man, I'm, you know, I'm pretty close. Now I can give people advice. I, I know what's going on in this game. You know, I got my lay of the land. You know, and, and like, this is the same thing. A Realm Reborn was not bad. Like, dude, you could complete a Realm Reborn. If you went through everything, you didn't read any of the quest texts, you'd probably complete that in like eight hours. Like, I I'm not even kidding you. Like, you could go through that shit real fucking fast. Because so much of it is quest text. So much of it is like, just kill one mob, click this thing, eight hours. I, I bet you could probably speed run it pretty fucking fast, man. Saying that you need to play for 100 hours is unrealistic for the average player. In fact, the average player Skipping will give everything. a new game two hours before deciding whether they want to carry on or quit. When yeah. I was playing Warframe, there is an achievement. Play for two hours. You know how many people have this achievement on Steam? Four. 40%. 40%. I knew it. Yep, there it is, boys. See, I, I, I've, got, I've got a mind to this kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Less than half of the people that downloaded Warframe survive for the first two hours. Mm -hmm. You're losing 60% of your potential player base within the first two hours. This yeah. is how important the new player experience is. This is the vibe. This is the same thing that happens with like streams, for example, is that whenever a game comes out, so this is the way that, this is the way that streams go for like games, like new release games, most new release games. That's the release. Is that people, the anticipation of the game is oftentimes more exciting than the game itself. It goes downhill after release. It's the same thing with viewership and streams. ...experience someone needs to have and enjoy to keep playing with your game. Saying, play for 100 hours, it gets good then, is pointless. No. If the majority of your yeah. player base is going to give up after, after two. two.
Mm -hmm. Hardcore gamers or veteran players of certain MMOs, ones with hundreds or thousands of hours already invested in, often forget how much of a time sink 100 hours really is for the average person. And See, I like, that's the thing is, like, Witcher 3 does this really well, right? It's like, Witcher 3 has a slow start, but on, like, the second cinematic of Witcher 3, it, it shows Yennefer's ass. Like, just boom, right there, and that gets people. Because they're like, wait a minute, wait a minute, I was going to quit. But now, I'm interested. I'll be right back. Alright, here we go. I find it extremely telling when players tell me to play their game for at least 100 hours to get to the good bit, but when I ask them if they're willing to play my MMO for 100 hours to try it out, suddenly it's too much of a time investment. Yeah. You ever notice how the long-time enfranchised players will demand others forgive their games? So I, I, yeah, I, I agree with this. I think that somebody should have to watch my stream for at least 100 hours before they decide that they want to watch another stream. You, you know what I mean? Like, they should have to watch it for at least 100 hours. So, like, if you follow the stream before you leave, you should watch at least a, watch it for 100 hours before you decide whether you like the stream or not early design and insist it's worth pushing through but then they're not willing to push through the early design of others if you have yeah. time invested into a game and you insist others do the same but when you try to invest time into another game you realize you're not enjoying it early on and consider quitting within the first two hours that's how new people feel coming to your game uh -huh. many game companies refuse to invest in or update the new player experience because that's not the part that they think makes money the big spend yeah. are the long time players the higher levels but those companies often yeah those are the super whales that you just get to harpoon them every day it's like the, the super whales like they could dude they take harpoons and it makes them stronger to see that you only find and keep new long-term players when people make it through your early game the first yeah. two hours of a game are essential never mind the suggestion of the first hundred most people won't find a hundred hours free in several months 100 hours is a crazy amount of free time for the average I person find that every day find. you can watch the complete series of Firefly in 15 hours you can watch all of Breaking Bad in 61 hours all of Game so of Thrones in 63 on average wow. you can finish the entire Lord of the Rings trilogy in 10 23 hours. hours the Wait, books what? not the films you can play oh, the entirety the of The Witcher 3 and all extra content and missions, including every Gwent match, in just over 100 hours. So telling someone that's, to- dude, Bro, that's a speed run. Holy shit, that's fast, man. Invest as much time as The Witcher would take into an MMO that might get good? is yep. a bit of a gamble. In 1995, entertainers Penn and Teller released the parody video game Desert Bus. Ooh. In it, you must drive a bus in real time from Tuscan to Las Vegas. It takes eight hours there and eight hours back, and the bus lists to the right constantly, so you have to actually pay attention. You can't just <laughs> click drive and wait. It takes 16 hours to finish. Imagine wow. someone saying to you, finish Desert Bus six times, and then it gets really good. Ooh. They might be telling the truth. It might get really good, but are you going to actually want to invest all of that time to get to the good bit, or are you going to go and do something that's good right now? Away. Yeah, so exactly. the average gamer has just over an hour and ten minutes a day free to play, and will give your game two hours before deciding whether they want to quit or carry on. And you're saying... Yeah. The game needs at least 100 hours. You've lost players far before you get to the 100 hour mark. Yeah. But let's ask another question. If the game does indeed get good after 100 <laughs> hours, why? Why do you need 100 hours for the game to get good? What is it mm -hmm. doing after the 100 hour mark that it can't be doing before? You should stream the bus game. When a player says yeah. a game gets good, they mean it changes. And there's only really three ways it can change to affect the enjoyment factor. Either it takes the systems it already has and refines them to such a degree that all the mechanical aspects suddenly make sense and are more enjoyable to use, or it changes everything about the systems and the changes for the better, or yeah. it sets up 100 hours worth of context and backstory and now things make sense and the story gets good. All of these have their issues. If your game takes 100 hours for the mechanics in it to become refined and enjoyable enough to be engaging and fun, then why are- I think a great game that scales up very well is Valheim. I think Valheim scales up incredibly well. 
and it keeps people engaged throughout the entire time. I think Rust is another one. There's plenty of other games like this too. And this isn't like, again, this isn't like a uh, instant gratification or whatever. Apps of fucking Lutely Valheim's dead. Well, so is Dark Souls 1 is dead too. How many people are replaying Dark Souls 1? Basically fucking nobody. And the reason for that is because it's a single player game that has an end point. Uh, that's just the way it goes. It doesn't mean it's a bad game. Are you actively choosing to keep the opening 100 hours, which you have admitted are subpar? Why on earth would you actively force a new player to slog mm -hmm. through the worst part of your game first before letting them get to the good part? Yeah. A game isn't a job, and the majority of yeah. your player base will not want to treat your game as a second job. Absolutely. It's not a trial you must pass, it's a recreational hobby. If you as a game designer have a 100 hour long game, but only the final two hours are as good as you can make them and as fun as they can be, then what you have is a two hour long game with 98 hours of intro crap. Trim the- It's just like my stream. And so yeah, anyway, I feel like one, uh, there's a- I think kind of this is kind of what happened with like Game of Thrones where they went like zero to 60 at, at like, you know, season eight. And then like another uh, another show that did this was like Carnival Row. If you guys watch that, I feel like like the plot went from fucking it went from like two miles an hour or five miles an hour to 60 miles an hour in like the last two and really the last one episode. And I, you know, it, it, I think that's a problem with pacing and like, yeah, you hit that big fucking, that, that massive climax at the end. Absolutely. But I do think that it would be better if it didn't happen all at the same time. I think that there are many games that have those moments throughout the game that feel good. Like Valheim is an example of this, where you fight the deer very, like really you fight the deer very, very early on and you fight elder pretty early on as well. And it's really between like uh, bone mass and motor where things really take a long more time. And, and I also want to say that uh, some people are saying that Valheim is not dead or Valheim is dead. Valheim will always have finite content that people will lose interest in very quickly until they actually develop real support for modders. Modding is how Valheim will live forever excess off and place quality over quantity. MMOs know the early game can suck, which is yeah. why they sell boosts. And people get angry at people when they buy boosts. But consider yeah. this. Let's redirect your anger toward the game design and not the players. Absolutely. Because when yes. long-term players discover True. new players have the ability to pay to boost through the content, they often get angry. But why? Why anger? Why annoyance? Is it because you feel the playing of the game is a rite of passage, a trial that you completed and therefore others must as well? Because if the early game was legitimately fun and enjoyable and great for you and someone boosts through it, you should feel sorry for them. They missed out on a great experience. You have good memories yeah. of it and they don't. What a shame. If the early game is indeed terrible and they boosted and you get annoyed mm -hmm. that you had to slog through it and they didn't, that's really That malicious. means the game You're sucks. You're admitting the game design yeah. is bad, but see enduring it as some sort of badge of honor. If the early game- Yeah, this is one of the worst things that gamers have convinced themselves into. Gamers have convinced themselves that being able to overcome bad game mechanics means that it's a good game. And I think this is like a really good example of this is uh, is Dark Souls 2. People are like, oh, well, you know, Dark Souls 2 is too hard for people and, you know, it's too complex, etc. Nah, it's just, it sucks. That's all. It, it's it's like uh, nobody wants, uh, they don't want to play that. Like, it's just stupid. Uh, like, PoE has things like that too. Uh, I, I think many games do. Being able to overcome bad game mechanics does not make them good game mechanics. It just makes them things that you can circumvent or things that you can overcome based off of a certain amount of trial and error. If play isn't good, then you should be lobbying for it to be improved, not mm -hmm. forcing other new players to go through it so their suffering matches yours and you yeah, feel it's vindicated. Ridiculous. If suffering through the early game crap is a rite of passage for your game's community, don't be surprised when that community doesn't grow and new players quit. The yep. other potential of a game getting good after 100 hours is because the gameplay changes to a new style or what you're doing in the game switches dramatically. This happens in terror yeah. when your class goes through the awakening and the gameplay of that class becomes vastly different. POE so has this, different, but it's not that fact, much different. your training and muscle <laughs> memory up to this point is now basically useless. If your game does this, why? 
If you have a game design switch that many players will argue is objectively better, then bring that forward so a new player gets a taste of it from the very start. I'm not saying yeah. you need to thrust a new player into a chaotic, overwhelming mess of a system from day one. I'm saying if you have decided your advanced players get to experience something awesome, then your new players should be working toward that from the start, not experiencing an inferior system for the first hundred hours. And yeah. finally, the idea that hundreds of hours worth of setup is needed for a payoff, such as context or characterization or world building. Skilled world building or emotional setups can be woven into the fabric of gameplay the audio or the visual mediums, the voiceover yeah. lines, or the gameplay itself. If you need one... I think that was a big criticism of the uh, post-Realm Reborn content, is that it took so long to develop the plot that finally happened in, like, the final cutscenes. Is that people were just like, oh my god, like, how long is this gonna take? What is this? Like, it, it's just taking forever. And, and like, I, I personally, as I said, I didn't really give a shit about it because I'm just so used to playing, uh, you know, things that take forever. But I do want to say that I, I can understand that absolutely. Yeah, too much filler. And they actually even reduced the amount of it, too. hours worth of setup for a payoff? It needs to be the greatest payoff in all of gaming. Because yeah. you are literally taking more time to set your story up than Breaking Bad takes to tell its entire story. Yeah, it's Otherwise, ridiculous. Otherwise, you need to trim down. And as the quote at the start mentioned, take more time to write a shorter letter. So the next time yeah. you tell someone it gets good after a hundred hours, please remember, if you actually want to attract new players to your game or convince new people to play it, this is a terrible thing to say. You are not If you are, uh, if, if a game gets better in uh, like over time, right? That's one thing, right? But if it gets better after 20 hours or 50 hours or a hundred hours, that's a problem with the game. Yeah, it's just a problem with the game your own course because the average person has just over one hour a day to play yeah. and will not enjoy the idea of investing a hundred hours into something they might not even enjoy mm -hmm. telling someone it takes a hundred hours to get good is basically saying to someone do you want to dedicate a third of your year to maybe enjoying this they will <laughs> on average invest two yeah, hours sounds pretty into bad. your game and they will leave if it doesn't engage them if your game yeah. takes a hundred hours to get good you are actively saying the first hundred hours is a subpar quality product compared to the rest so mm -hmm. why on earth are you keeping it and why are you making it the first thing that potential new players to your franchise see you are putting your worst foot forward if yep. your game changes after a hundred hours Bad and suddenly impression. get fun just put that fun at the front and start with it if you are not able to build an engaging involved narrative story or world within 100 hours sit down with your writing team and condense that down yeah. Telling a new player your game gets good after a hundred hours isn't a positive description of your game. No, it's You're not. You're telling a new player they will need to experience an actively inferior product. They'll have to play through a pointless section. In some cases, if the game changes in the late game, a completely irrelevant 100 hours, because it won't matter what they do in those anyway. If you I, I want to say that the comparisons to Final Fantasy are, I think, partially true, but partially not true. And the reason why I think that they are partially not true is that as you are telling a story, that story will just simply take time in order to be told. And I think that it only makes sense in Final Fantasy whenever you put it in the context that your character, uh, you put it in context of character progression. Whereas if you just look at it from story building and you say the level doesn't matter, you're just playing through the story, well then I think that it's completely fine. However, I do think that the post to Realm Reborn content, because there's no character progression, that's whenever things really do drag on for people. Absolutely. 100 hours to set a narrative up, you mm -hmm. need to condense your story down. When you say to someone it gets good after 100 hours, yeah. that's not a positive for your game design. So if you want new players to experience your game and stick with it, the next time you're telling someone it gets good 100 hours in, just stop and ask yourself, why? Why do you feel the need to tell this to them? Why do you need to experience 100 hours of low yeah. quality game before the good bit happens? And if you're making a game, remember- I hope the people that are in the New World subreddit watch this because this is exactly the kind of arguments that they use to discredit journalists that play their game. And they're like, well, they, they don't understand it. They don't get it. They have no idea, right? Like that's what it is. You've got two hours to grab and hold someone's attention, and then yeah. remain consistently high quality. 
If eventually you realize your early game is weak compared to your late game because you as a developer have improved and your quality has increased, change your early game to match your late game's quality. Yeah. I guarantee you will notice an increase in players and revenue. And Final Fantasy if did you do this. Do. Sorry, they reduced this video quests. dragged on longer than it needed to. If I had longer to make it, I would have written a shorter script. Cheers for watching. Very Another fun. massive thank you to the supporters on Patreon and Twitch who keep the channel alive. Okay. You can support Very from only clever. one pound a month. Check the video description for links to the Patreon, Twitch, Twitter, and Discord. And as always, have a great day. It's about right. Uh, I, I completely agree. Uh, games that take too long to get into them, uh, that is a problem with the game itself. And any time that somebody uses that in as, as an excuse, uh, I will take them. I will take that less seriously. Apps of fucking lootly, man.